Hello, my name is Crystal and I am an academic coach here on the college team. Now today I will be, pre be presenting a college success webinar. In this webinar, we'll be, go over, we'll be going over things on how to get started at OPSU, how to maintain good standing, and also student support and what resources are available for you. All right, let's get started. So when you are getting started at OPSU, some things need to be put in place before you actually are ready to log into classes. Firstly, you need to make sure you're, you completed the financial aid process. You wanna make sure you met with your academic advisor. They will be helping you register for classes each start. And once you do have those classes in place, then you need to order your textbooks. For textbooks, each start you can use a voucher code to charge your books to financial aid. And something to be aware of, ebooks are emailed, but if they are an actual physical book, these are going to be shipped. So when you are ordering these, just make sure that you are putting your physical address if you are ordering a physical book so that way it's not sent to the campus. And there is also a really helpful OPSU textbook textbook ordering guide that your academic coach can share with you. So when we're talking about eBooks, a lot of the courses you are gonna take might require a Cengage um, subscription, which is basically an online, an online subscription, an eBook. And this will provide you access to your course materials. So if you do have a Cengage um, subscription that you need, what will happen is you will be emailed a Cengage code, access code, once you purchase it. And then with this code is you need to put it on the Cengage link provided through your OPSU dashboard. And if you look over here, this is kind of what the access code will look like. It'll be a really long number, mix of numbers and letters, and then this is the access code that you will use. Accessing your courses. So courses won't be available until the very first day of classes. When you are able to log in, make sure you want to, firstly, you want to make sure you're reviewing your syllabus. Now with college classes, each class you will have a syllabus on attached, which is very important. It's going to have important information such as your instructor's preferred contact method and the required books for your class. It'll also have like your class policies, kind of a breakdown of grades, every, all the important information will be listed in your syllabus. You also wanna make sure that you are reading your emails and you're checking your OPSU email address. All your communication from classes, from teachers, they're gonna be sent to your OPSU email address. And then your teachers are gonna communicate with the class through class announcements, and that'll be on your dashboard. So you wanna make sure you're checking emails and those class annou announcements regularly. Next, we wanna make sure you're showing activity by logging in and actually submitting assignments. Now, if you have any problems with accessing your courses or getting started this first week, it is very important that you're reaching out to your academic coach. Your academic coach is going to be with you throughout your entire college journey, and they're basically your point person. They are there to make sure that everything's running smoothly. Now, of course, like if you have specific assignment questions or, assignment, or questions on your exams or quizzes, your teacher is a great resource. But if you have questions you're not too sure who to ask, your academic coach is gonna be your person for that. Now, dropping classes. Now, if the how it is a little different in the college, college program is that you're actually paying for these classes. So if you are thinking about dropping a class, you need to think about some really important things. So before you drop, stop and think about these few items first. First of all, is it past the refund deadline? There, when you're in college, there's a date that you cannot drop after or else you're still gonna be charged for a class. So if you drop a class past this refund deadline, you're gonna not only not get the credit for the class, but you're gonna have to pay for the class. Next, you wanna consider, is this class a prerequisite for your next classes? If you don't take this class and you drop it, are you gonna have to take it again You know, next term? Or are you, is it your schedule going to be impacted where you're you're not able to take the next class because you didn't finish the first class 
And then next you want to really ask yourself, why do I really want to drop this class? Is it because I just don't like it? I'm not really, you know, interested in the material. Because with college, you're going to be taking a lot of different courses. You're going to be taking history, math, science, art, and not all of the classes, you know, I'll be honest, are going to be something that you're really interested in. For me, it was art. I had to take art classes. I hate to draw. Like, that's the last class I wanted to take, but I had to take it to meet my requirements. And so, you know, that's something you're definitely going to experience as well. But the classes that your advisors recommend are classes that you need to take for your degree. They're not going to put you in classes that you don't need. They're going to put them, put you in those classes for a reason. You also want to consider, will this impact my financial aid? So sometimes here, if you do drop a class and it shows that you have not, it's an attempted, attempted class, but you haven't passed it, that will definitely affect um, your financial aid. And we'll go into that in a little more detail in this webinar. And then lastly, have I talked to my academic coach about this? Before you drop a class or even if you're thinking about it, you need to reach out to your academic coach so they can best, um, best help you with the situation. So this is a list of common OPSU holds that you might see. So there's I just kind of, I'm going to do a quick rundown here. What is too many hold? So this is basically a hold if you haven't watched the video and completed the quiz. Um, a lot of these are waived, such as the ACT, SAT hold. That's waived due to COVID right now. Um, the immunization hold is waived if you're an online student. The admissions hold is one if you need official college or high school transcripts are needed. If you did graduate through our high school program, though, those transcripts are automatically sent to the college. And there is an advisor and bursar hold. The advisor is just need, if you have a hold for advisor hold, it just means you have to reach out to your advisor so they can remove this. And a bursar hold usually is there if a student owes a thousand or more dollars, and then you need to make a payment arrangement with the bursar's office. And then a deficiency hold is when you need to enroll in a plus course, and your academic advisor would have more information about those plus courses. But yeah, this is kind of a good example, a little cheat sheet of if you do have a hold, what does it mean? But yeah, if you have questions about any of these, you know, definitely reach out to your academic coach who can help you. All right, so maintaining good standing. So when you are in college, it's all about maintaining good standing with the with the college. We, I'm, we're going to be going over a little bit about GPA requirements, academic standing, and then also again dropping courses. So with your GPA, you do need to maintain at least a 2.0 to remain in good standing. And that 2.0 is about a C average. If you do not get that, then you will be at risk of being either an academic notice, academic probation, or academic suspension. You'll hear a lot about SAP in college, which is Satisfactory Academic Progress. And it, this basically just kind of goes into more detail about what an academic notice is, what probation is, and what suspension is. But I always like to refer to this college handbook if you have any questions. And let me just show you what it looks like here. So this is the OPSU college handbook, their general catalog, and it's over 200 pages of policies. Like you have your calendar here, everything that you need to know about tuition, about, um, about like uh, the map, campus map, the policies about academic probation, anything like that is going to be in this. So this is very helpful to have to refer to. Also to be aware of is this um, satisf satisfactory academic progress when it comes to your financial aid. Not only do you need to keep a 2.0 to remain in good standing with 
OPSU, but you actually have to maintain certain progress to keep your financial aid. And one of that is completion rate. So this is very important to be aware of. Students must complete 75% of all hours attempted, meaning you need to pass 75% of your classes. So this is also where dropping classes come into play. If you take a class and you drop it past the deadline where it's gonna be counted against you if you drop it, then that's gonna affect your completion rate. Um, an example here, if you take cre 12 credit hours, which is considered full-time, and you pass all of them, that's that's considered 100% completed. So remember here, you need to be at 75%. So you're well above 75%, so you're, you're doing good here. But if you take 12 credit hours and you fail or you drop half of them, that is 50% completed. So that's going to put you put you in hot water here because you're at 50% when you need to complete 75%. So let's say you get the 2.0, <clears throat> you're in good standing, but if you are looking to get a higher award, then you really want to be striving for that Dean's Honor Roll and President's Honor Roll. So now what that is, is that's basically getting a 3.5. 3.5 GPA. So to receive that, you must be taking at least 12 credits in a semester to receive with no incomplete grades or Fs. If you want to be getting the president's on a roll, which is a step above, which is a 4.0, basically all A's, you must be taking 12 credits in a semester to receive with no incomplete grades. Now, of course, 2.0 is what we strive for. That's the sweet spot that's going to keep you in good standing. But of course, if you're if you're really wanting to to reach honor roll, absolutely go for the 3.5 and higher. These are excellent things to have on your transcript and it's gonna put you in a better place to be receiving scholarships in the future. So I definitely recommend striving for those. Now, if you are able to maintain an honor roll, honor roll GPA, and you've done it throughout your entire bachelor program, then you can graduate with honors, which is something that's really cool. So if you get a 3.5, that's considered cum laude, and you must receive the 3.5 cumulative GPA your entire program. If you get a 3.75 um, throughout your program, then that's magna cum laude. And then finally, the 4.0 summa cum laude is a 4.0, that's a GPA that's earned. And if you have more questions about this, you can definitely refer back to that catalog because it'll go into a little bit more detail with this. Back to dropping courses. Okay, so if you drop a course, like I said, be sure you double check with not only your academic advisor, but your academic coach because dropping courses can affect your pace. Because remember, we need to be completing 75% of attempted classes or else we can be in hot water with financial aid where you might not be receiving funding for re funding for financial aid. And then also can affect your standing. It can affect your overall GPA and your academic standing. So before you drop, stop and think. Think about a couple of things and reach out to your academic advisor and academic coach. All right, something also that's very important is financial aid timeframe. So if you are receiving any sort of financial aid, they're not going to be giving you financial aid for an unlimited time, right? You're in a four-year degree program, so you can only receive financial aid in a certain amount before, you know, financial aid's like, hey, you know, you should be graduated by now. So definitely something to be aware of. So students that are enrolled, this will apply to you, that are enrolled in a four-year degree program may attempt 160 semester hours to complete the program. So they'll give you 160 hours to complete your four-year degree. And then just to give you a little bit of reference, it usually takes about 120 hours to complete your bachelor's program. But after 160, if you haven't gotten your degree, then there's gonna be a cutoff for financial aid. And then this is also something that you can bookmark that has more of the policies with financial aid. All right, student support. So yes, absolutely high school is different than college. With college, you know, there's, there's still help available and we're gonna be going over those resources, some of the support, support staff, and then making connections. 
the biggest thing with college, I feel like, is self-advocacy, speaking up for what you need. So no one is going to ask, you know, besides your academic coach, no one's going to ask, your teachers aren't going to really always reach out to you about stuff. If you have a problem, you really need to be the person that is speaking up. No one cares about your education more than yourself. So in college, communication is key. Make sure you're staying in contact with teachers if you have an issue. If you are confused about something, please loop your academic coach in. If, you know, if there's no communication there, people don't know there's a problem. So in college, it's very important to seek out help if you need it. Um, if you don't hear back from a teacher or an academic advisor, it is absolutely okay to follow up, but just make sure that it is within, you know, a reasonable time frame. Um, check if, did you email the teacher over the weekend? Was it a holiday? You know, if it's been a couple of business days and you don't hear anything back, totally okay to follow back up. And keep in mind, there are a lot of academic resources and people available to help you in college. Your teachers are more than happy to help if you need extra assistance. Um, you can ask to set up a Google Meet or a Zoom meeting with them. There is also a 24-7 tutor.com link in your dashboard. Now that is free and it connects you to a tutor. And it's very helpful, like if you're in math classes, you just need extra help with a certain problem, or even if you're writing anything. If you're writing something, you can upload your paper there and then someone will review it, make feedback, and then send it back to you. So super helpful, it's free, free resource. I really you know, encourage you to use that. Support staff, like I said, you have your instructors, they are there to help you. You have your academic advisors, your academic coach who will be with you your entire college journey. Your enrollment counselor is gonna be with you for the first week to make sure everything's um, everything's running smoothly. So you have that support as well. And there is an OPSU resource guide that is really helpful that we put together. And this basically gives you a rundown of who your academic advisor is, their best contact information, and then also who to contact if you need tutoring help, if you need technical help, how to get a hold of the help desk, um, your academic coach inf information here, the registrar, bursar's office, financial aid, the bookstore, everything you'll need will be right here in this um, resource guide. And lastly, peer support. So you are not alone in this program. There are students that are also starting college for the first time. They're most likely gonna be in the same class as you. I really encourage you to reach out to each other and build that community. Um, like I said, many of you are gonna be taking the same classes and you might be taking those same classes for four years together. You're gonna be graduating, graduating around the same time. And when you get familiar with each other, you can also message each other through your dashboard if you're in the same class. And I really encourage you guys to form online study groups together and support each other through this college journey. I will leave you with one of my favorite quotes from Nelson Mandela. Um, education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Education is so powerful and, you know, college isn't easy. So if you ever, ever do feel discouraged, know that there are people here rooting for you that are wanting to be that support for you. And really remember why you got started. Are you doing this for your family? Are you doing this for yourself? Like re really sometimes you're gonna have to pull that motivation in college and remember why, why you are here and that yes, it's gonna be hard, but you are more than capable of graduating and getting that degree. I thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you learned something in this webinar. Um, if you have any questions or if you need help along the way, please feel free to reach out to your academic coach. Thank you.